In law, we say delegatus non potest delegare. That means you can't delegate that which has been delegated to you. But on the streets, they say when you relute that that have been recovered, it is called aluta continuum or aluta continua. The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission recently suspended by the president on an allegation of financial impropriety, insubordination, and lack of respect to court order by the Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Akamalemi. He still generated comments on both social and conventional media for obvious reasons. In the history of the fight against corruption since the inception of the EFCC, one cannot but agree with the fact that Ibrahim Magu, suspended acting chairman, has risen above his pair and performed better, even obtained more convictions in court, including that of former governors, when just opposed against the record of his predecessor in the office. Kudos, however, to the stand of the president, Muhammad Buhari, to fight corruption. However, Magu's approach has largely been condemned as being selective by some discerning commentator to the extent that some have even questioned whether the government is actually fighting corrupt people or pursuing passive corrupt opponents. I leave you to be the judge of that. My concern today is not about whether Magu or EFCC under Magu fought corruption, because I agree that he actually fought corruption, albeit selective. But I'm concerned more about putting institutional framework that will stand the test of time, like e-government has done in United Arab Emirates, to avoid the reoccurrence of Magu pitfall scenario. One of the accusations against Magu is lack of obedience to court order. A local that states that when a father sends his son to steal, the son pulls down the door of his victim. Just figure that out. Magu is probably, probably disobeying court order with impunity because he's encouraged by the president of the Buhari administration, which abounds to this disobey court order. Even the Nigerian police, ICPC, and other government agencies are not left out of this fragrant disobedience to court orders. We still remember the case of Pinnacle Communications against ICPC and so many others. However, President Buhari cannot be completely exonerated from Mangu's attitude because apart from his failure to act on the DSS report to the 8th National Assembly, the basis for which the Senate refuses confirmation, Mangu also could have been a lord unto himself because the president refused to constitute the board of the commission, leaving the acting chairman to act in any manner he deems fit without control from a board. What now made him act promptly on Malami's letter? Is it the death of Abakari? Another one million dollar question for you. Secondly, is the fact that we complain about corrupt and compromised nature of our policing system. Yet, this government keep recycling policemen as the head of such agency. Almost 50% of the staff strength of EFCC are drawn from men and women of the Nigerian police, despite having a shortfall in the number of policemen and women in Nigeria. As Section 2A sub 2 of the EFCC Act did not make the position of the chairman the exclusive preserve of the police, now you know why the president is also culpable. Mind you, before you start blaming me, I'm not saying the police are bad. They have their own and numerous multifaceted challenges are problems to deal with. And the earlier government starts solving the problem of the Nigeria police, an institution that wins lorry abroad but are reduced to garbage at home, the better for our society. But well, I know it concerns them. I would therefore advocate that the president should not only, as a matter of urgency, constitute the board of the EFCC, he should also ensure professionalism in the commission by refusing the temptation of appointing yet another policeman to head the organization. Government and agencies should also make obedience of court order paramount in all its activities and should sanction any ministries, past status, and agency that disobeys court order. Why the NJC should, as a matter of urgency, admonish and penalize judges that are issuing frivolous and vexatious order. As respect for the rule of law is the bedrock of any democratic society. Finally, the National Assembly should look at the law setting up these anti-graft agencies with a view of amending same to not only make the ICPSC and the EFCC, but also in line with global best practices and avoid the repeat of abuse of absolute power. Ensure that specialization in various fields of investigation, case reviewing, prosecution and asset management are encouraged and prompted to enhance transparency, probity, and accountability. And if you are in support, say aye, and those against say nay. The eyes have it. Mm -hmm. uh, Liberals, I have to commend you for the stamina you have in dissecting these things. I have to say, you have to permit me, I, I find these things very boring. 
very tedious because it's almost like running around in circles. And they would have us preoccupy ourselves as if this thing, you, on the one hand, you're saying review of frivolous court orders. When I was going through that, I could find that in 2013, there was a, a committee set up to review frivolous court orders. 2015, they were doing the same thing. So it, it, it's like a recycling of the same. We're not getting anywhere fast. And I think the reason we have that. So and, we and on the one hand, you say, okay, separate, uh, merge ICPC and EP, uh, EFCC, then separate the different. So you, you try, you mix it this way, mix it that way. The, what is at the heart of it is that you have lawless people heading law, so-called law commissions. So we need to really find a way to just, as you keep referencing, cleanse the, you do the Asian stable thing. You just need one, one thing to just purify the whole system. Get rid of, as, as Trump would say, you drench, dredge, what's the word? Dredge, dredge, the swamp. dredge the swamp. Dredge the swamp, completely do a sand fill and start all over again because the people you're dealing with, I mean, I was saying to you before the program, you see the likes of Dino Malai, he's dancing. But is, is, that, is that the governance we're looking to? But he's celebrating because Magu is being held. So I'm not even interested but, in all of them. They're all cut from the same cloth. Until you drench the trench, should we just sleep there? That's, like that's why I'm more interested in having conversations around, you know, let's get the right people. I know it sounds a long term <laughs> goal. I know, I know. You're dealing with the immediate problems. Exactly. I'm dealing with. But my own is that I'm, I'm almost prophesying that no matter what you put down, that system mm -hmm. will be abused, and you just be going around and around, be analyzing it as if there was a way forward. As long as you're dealing with the same people, you will mm -hmm. still keep meeting the same bottlenecks. It's like throughout today, there's a link in everything that has been said. Yeah. Um, we, we have a problem. We have a problem that we're not mentoring people. We have a problem that people are not growing up. Yeah. Uh, we have a problem that will take a long-term solution yes. to solve. Yeah. Um, so everything we do right now is a joke. So, because <laughs> so no one is serious about the, about the outcome, um, I beg to say that the president does not really care where this country is going. He's unaware now, he's unaware. Yeah, and so you can't even say the president is on an anti-corruption drive. That's a joke as well. So, um, there's no one, there's no goal. We don't have goals, that's the truth. It's one thing to say you have goals but you may not have them. That you say you have them is a different thing. So we're not ready. It's, it, it, liberal said it earlier, it's a complex Will problem. we even learn lessons from, he's listed some lessons. Will we learn those lessons? Sorry, Simi, please, you, you've tried governance. Maybe you'll tell us how likely these things are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Um, no, I, I don't have any insights to offer. Um, <laughs> the, the, he mentioned um, PACAC and, and, and all of that. The truth is, it, it shouldn't really matter who the AFCC chairman is. If it's if there's an institution that that works, why, why, why is a, the chairman uh, of the and a pivotal in, um, agency acting for five years? Doesn't make sense. Why is the chairman from one region of the country? You know, mm -hmm. um, always. You know yeah. that doesn't make sense to me. So therefore, you didn't start with uh, with sense, so you can't end with sense, you know. Um, and uh, and even the EFCC, it's sloppiness in terms of just you you go around buildings in Abuja, Lagos, and you just see EFCC in red. Um, and it's so disheartening because as a nation, it just shows if they are a foreigner, you've never been to Nigeria before, and you're walking through the best neighborhoods of our country. And you're just seeing EFCC, you know, yeah. labeled in red. Yeah. You're showing to everybody is that we are just all thieves, and anything yeah. that is good, anything that is aspirational, anything. So why, why do you have to? Why do you take over buildings and stop the revenue? This is a country that's looking for money, and you take mm. over all these fancy buildings. People want to pay rents, but you kick everybody out. And you, mm. So EFCC has because just never have a different team not managing just from the, the chairman, assets. or even yeah, from what they do with the assets. And they, you, you stop people from looting, but nobody's stopping EFCC from relooting. Because what mm. happens to these properties and what are the backdoor channels that they use to share these properties, the cars and the, the marine boats and whatever assets that they take up? They, there's no reports that shows, oh, from like, like they do in South Africa. You know, like, oh, we, we, we took up all these assets, we were able to auction it, and from this auction we raised X amount of money, and from this X amount of money we built this roundabout. So I'd want to say that... Um, you have all spoken a little bit of my mind. However, where I uh, deviate a little bit is, we're not talking about the, um, we see the agencies are not working together. There's no synergy between them. There's some level of uh, competition. So you find one agency within the same government 
you know, having their own masters, another agency, you know, having taken orders from, and that way they don't share information and ultimately the because goal, the, the set is not goal in charge. is not achieved. Not aware of so if that aware. goal is not clearly set and you don't have um, a single alignment of uh, purpose, you find this kind of confusion. You know, I think it's failure on the part of presidents not ensuring that this agency are yeah. all intertwined and they share information and resources. Okay. So you don't have this guy. Because imagine the Magu we're talking about was indicted by uh, DSS yeah. years yeah. ago. Same agency within the presidency. Yeah. Okay, just so unfortunate. And um, uh, from what I can gather there, the president is only in charge. And so unfortunate, there need to be more synergy. Thank you um, very much, Seydou. And like Chuka said at the beginning, we have laid out the buffet and invited you to come and chill with us. The exchange of ideas goes on even as we close out this edition. So continue the conversation on your social media platform, on our social media platform also, and on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous episodes and broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com for slash the advocate ng and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel at plus tv africa because that's where we hear your feedback till next time it's bye from us and welcome to you ah okay mm. excellent Chuka, you're not waving <laughs> oh, no we've waved already no no so you have to wave, you have to wave where I'll she's do a waving synchronized second wave. thanks guys thank yeah, you yeah thank you five panelists Five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.